Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and yes, yes, this is the PRS SE2408 that we're giving away when we hit 300K, when we have the uh, Dancing Bears concert. Um, so whenever we hit it is whenever we give it away. We're just going to keep watching, and it's going to be one member on the GuitarGate website. Um, and so if you're not a member, that's the first link in the description. And this one is different because it has the coil taps. So you get the... Or the... Whatever you prefer. Now, I'm on my website, and Brian J. Olson wants me to do the very famous, perhaps the most famous guitar video on the internet. Uh, Prince playing with Tom Petty, Steve Winwood, Jeff Lynne, and others doing While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And I figured, you know what? It's time for a deep dive. So, I've obviously seen this before, I've obviously heard it before. Um, what we're gonna try to do here is get in the mind of what Prince may or may not be thinking while he's playing this. Sure, this is improvisation. Sure, he's flying like a laser beam from the sun during this, right? He's not actually thinking all the time. But there's a couple choice moments in here where it's very clear that this dude knows exactly where he is all the time and in complete control. Don't let the showmanship fool you. Prince is arguably the baddest man that ever walked the planet. Just saying. Here we go. And there's a couple things in here which I'm gonna point out, which I haven't seen other people on the internet point out. So, here we go. We're gonna fast forward to the solo. Let me start a little bit before so you get a so you get a, a basic foundation of what he's soloing over. It's A minor. A minor over G, you just descend the bass line. A minor over F sharp. A minor over F. You'll see a lot of people do this. Play that F major triad, but you're really getting the sound of F major seven. And then it alternates based upon where you are between D major to E major or C major to E major, or sorry, to E7, right? And so you gotta kinda pay attention to where you are, but that's your basic framework. It is in the neighborhood of A minor, but what does Prince do with it? All right, so let's start with that first little phrase here. He comes in. We are up here in pattern two, if you get down with the cage system. You don't have to, but this is where it is, right? It's easy to learn this way. Coming in on the four of D in A minor, right? So. Here's your root, minor third, four. Bending the four, in through the five, right through the flat five, and he's kind of going back down and up with it. The four, as you know, is used to suspend the third. It's a subdominant kind of sound. So it makes you feel like you're going away. You're adding this tension that is in a way sound, right? Because you're suspending the third. It's basically the, what the four is for, right? That's why so many people have trouble, have trouble soloing over the four chord because it really is a departure from the tonic. And this is going to be a theme throughout Prince's lead. So check it. Bending up. I'm not used to these nines on this guitar. I'm a little, my intonation's a little, a little crap, but you understand. Four to the five. D to E. And just bringing it down a little bit each time. landing right on the four, super vibrato, 
pulling down. That's a very Prince thing. Flat three, four, hammer on. Little push, pull off, land on your root, right? Now, we've been descending through this cycle here, right? Now, where are we when we get to this next part? Now, right there, you hear something change. You're like, something cool happened. Stop what you're doing, guitar players, musicians in general. Figure out why something sounded like, ooh, what was that? Something special happened. What was that? Listen to it again, you'll hear it. Right, it, it just, it sounded a little brighter, a little less minor. What happens is when the band finally goes over this G chord, when they go to the G, watch him. Watch him reach up here, and he's, he comes from this. And then he goes and targets this B, which is the third of G, third hunting, right? But it is the nine, the two, if you will, in your key center of A. And he gets there by way of this F sharp. Now, I'm guessing here, because I could watch him do it, and I've tried listing to see if he goes or to get to that B. B is the target. The third of the G is the target, but I think whether he gets there or not, he's shooting to reach there by that F sharp, which lands us squarely in the key of G major or A Dorian, which is A minor with a major sixth. And that's gonna be the key for the rest of the tune here. Check it. Right there. You see that? You see that third finger? That boop, doop, doop. That is F sharp on the fourth string and immediately rocks over to grab the B. So the band is playing G and B and he pushes behind the G to settle us into Dorian. Keep that A minor key centered approach but lands squarely on the third of G, that nine of A, which gives it that bright, more major sounding sound of Dorian, right? It gives it that little bump. Watch it real closely. I know it seems like a little thing, but this is, it's the little nuances that make Prince Prince, or your favorite players who they are. Stop what you're doing, take an extra two minutes, figure it out. Yeah, that. So, back up to the flat three, and get back down to your root. There you go, onward. And then, it, and a little shh. One of the things Prince does, which I love so much, like so many great guitar players, when he's using the wah and other things like that, is you get a lot of the shh, right? So, just know that that's like a tonal texture thing and there's no like tab for that, okay? The point is, you came down from there and you're coming back into this area. Pattern four, A minor. But what does he do? What does he do? He comes in right on the E and what is it? F sharp, bending. That is the major six bending into the flat seven landing us squarely again in Dorian. It, it, it just gives you that Prince sound. And then of course, he slowly opens the wah to let the gate open up and just, and it, and it just, it just sears. Eventually, gets to the flat seven, which bends to the root. Rocks bound. He's always following the chords too. If you notice, he's always thinking about where the chords are going up and where the chords are going down. He's got, he's always doing these little, you know, things, right? But he's usually going down and grabbing a piece of the chord. So he is aware of the chord 
that he's playing over the whole time. So he's thinking about the rhythm guitar the whole time. All right, now check this part out. Now what do you have in here is you, you can see him with his thumb starting back down here, like playing the bass notes. And he's going up and he's shooting for this little thing here, this little dyad. This is E and A. So you could look at this as the major third and fifth of C. You could look at this as the root and, um, uh, 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 what am I, uh, sorry, flat seven and five of A. But for whatever reason, he decides to hang here and hammer on to that E from E flat, makes you, gives it that kind of C major kind of blues thing, but we're still obviously uh, centered squarely in A. And he just starts, again, opening up the gate. Then, once he gets past that, once he's, once he's said, okay, I've said enough about this, this one spot that's going to sit here and open as opposed to a lick, right? I'm going to make this texture right now. Then he switches to a different texture, which you could construe as a lick, but it's very clear that this, that, uh, right? where he's just pedaling on the open E string, going down the A major scale. So E, D, C, B, A, G. And then instead of going to your F and F sharp in here, so are we Dorian, are we Erlen, he goes back to the, right? Flat three, two, one. Hammer on and pull off from the, from the one to the nine, and then to the root. So he finishes with that little motif. So I look at this as kind of like, this is a texture thing, where he's opening up the gate, finishes with another texture thing that descends, right, on a higher string with a different timbre. And then, whatever that little lick he does there, finishing with a super memorable motif. Really, really a lot in here, right? And you know he's winging it. But there's, there's, there's really a lot of conscious little things. It's so musical. That's the word. It's just so musical. Listen to this little part again. That so hot. And right there, a nod to Clapton. That, because for those of you that have learned this solo from the record, you'll know that one of the things that everybody does uh, that was played earlier in the earlier guitar solo on here is people is you you bend through the root, and that while my guitar gently weeps thing that you're bending through the root to the nine and coming back down. When you're a beginning guitar player, a beginning improviser, generally we teachers uh, encourage students to refrain from bending the root. Because if you don't get there, you know, if you don't, I mean, you're immediately squashed, right? So you have to, you gotta get to that nine, right? You, you gotta get there. And everywhere in between, right, that's, you kind of get that crying sound that way. So in my mind, that is Prince's little tip of the cap to, to the recorded version. Here comes a big pick slide. Now for me, this is all about the rhythm. This is like, this is like, okay, we did our little descending thing. We made a texture thing. We made a little uh, memorable motif. You know, we, uh, we, we started with a little super melodic. This is just rhythm. This is standing on the tippy toes, flat seven to one that. Right? He's just feeling the whole band. It's flat three, uh, flat seven, one, and flat three. You're bending the flat seven into the one, you're bending the flat three into the four, 
and it's totally loose. It's whatever you want to do with it. But this, this, this is all swagger. This is all tip of the toes rhythm leaning forward right here. That's what this is. <laughs> Little tremolo picking just because he can. Again, back to a memorable line. Now, you can tremolo pick it, you can try to whatever, but but what's happening here is you're slowing it down. You're 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 not you're not playing it fast anymore like you did up here. You're trying to create another little motif that it's the and what this is is five major six. There's Dorian F sharp F sharp right flat seven. Root, two, flat three, four, five, trill. So again, establishing A Dorian, knowing where your F sharps are in an A minor context, completely, totally on purpose. Let's keep going. Look at that throw. One of the best throws I've ever seen. Listen to it. It's bon, don, ga, da. It's four parts, right? It's a four part, you know, slide, throw, catch, slide back, release. That is a, a four part guitar throw. Best you can do. Such a showman. Got, got the guy to catch him. So what does he do here? He knows, he knows that he's got to get to turn around. He's got to check out where the guy is first. And he's got to get something under his hands that he's going to be able to sustain, right, while he's doing that and have enough time for him to push back to then grab the rhythm. So here's how he does it. He comes out of it. You know, establishing that four again like he did in the beginning. Little. And then starts this little textured. But it's not the full descending run like you're expecting. He keeps it just on the root in the flat seven. And so what does that enable him to do? It enables him to signal the guy he's gonna, he's gonna fall, right? He makes eye contact with him, stays there, turns his back to him, leans back, Dude catches him, keeping the same thing going, right? Hey, look, he's got him, cracking him, right? Give him that little smile, look, see him? Right there. Turn, lean back, maintains it, right? Then takes it up to the next part, right? So you got E and G. The bend, holds the bend as he's pushing him back up. Yeah. Right? Re recalibrates with the band, you know, letting it sear, grabbing the rhythm, right? Back to the chords. Gives him a little look, look at that grin, now watch this. He's like, okay, you want another? You think it's done. Obviously, Tom's like, go, baby. Go, baby, go. Watch it. Right at it. You hear the wah kick on? So good. Just like in the beginning. Four, flat three, root. But you start to get the wah kick on, right? He's gonna go full gate on you. Oh, 
jumps down, root, two, flat, three, starts it slow, picks it up, right, while the gate is opening. Remember, great wah-wah players don't just keep the beat, right? They open and close the gate like you would sing. That's why you see them open their mouth like that, right? It's, it's, it's like a connection of the throat. There's like a whole lesson on this on my website um, about like, you know, Wawa not just being a chuka 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 And watch it. I mean, it just sears through the sky. So what he does, he's going up here. This, you know. Right? A minor, pentatonic, straight down. But then he starts grabbing that four again, just like in the beginning, just like in the middle, hammering home that motif that. So Prince's cry for My Guitar Gently Weeps is the four running through the, five, through the flat five into the five and hanging out in there over and over again. That is the, that's the cry. Now one thing he does that I notice is he tends to pull it down, the third string, instead of push up, like I do. Um, no right, no wrong, and you know what? Probably do it different, different nights, frankly, depending on how juiced up you are. Right there. I haven't forgotten. You thought I forgot about that F sharp? No, he didn't forget about that F sharp. But wait, the best is yet to come. All right. Now this is this right here shows you in Prince's little way, right? that he's just one of the best of the best and most tasteful, and he's thinking about the rhythm the whole time. See if you can hear what he's doing here. And you could tell by his look that was the moment. That was it. He saved it till the very end. He saved it to the very end. See if you get this with me, okay? So he comes and he starts doing octaves. Now Prince does it like this. Thumb, third finger, and muting the rest. I'm gonna do it like this to illustrate, uh, and because I, it's just not gonna be as clean if I do it the other way. But he comes in on A. His little T's to C, but then lands on that nine as the chords descend to G. So what is that nine of A? That's B, which is, which is what? The third of G. So we got, right? That little move there. Then what happens? It's G going into A. Right? And it's real slick and loose. It's not specific like this. It's right? It's a it's a it's a it's a whole slide off, right? It's filthy. But just see if you can hear it. And then down to the E. Right? And again, it's not specific. This isn't something you tab out. He's kind of just starting on A. Going to the B, G, I go. It's like a really heavy part, right? It's such a, it's such like a riff in a song without a riff. Like it's, it's, it just shows to how diverse and how spicy Prince can be at times. You know, when you're playing a huge band like this and there's like six guitar players and keys and everything else like that, it takes serious balls to go down in, in octaves and go all the way down into like a into like a grind land down there, right? And you just have it be so slick and greasy that you never really land on anything. Super, super hot, super hot. Check it again. <laughs>
Right there, you see Prince's face? He's like, you gonna get it? You gonna get it? You gonna get it? He's like, you know I have it. He told him with his face he had that F before he even got there. Watch it. Watch it happen. Same basic thing, right? I'm gonna do it my octaves like this. Now, he's muting a lot, picking all the strings, um, so it gives it that real big clunky sound. You might get an open G in here every now and again, but the basic concept here is you're finishing with a what is like a, a simple single note line, which just catches the ear at the right moment. So you're starting on C, which is your flat three and A, right? D, right? Four, five, F sharp, right, six. Oh, sorry, G and then F sharp. I miss, I, I spoke too soon. So he's going G and F sharp. And then finally, when the progression gets around to the actual F, not the F sharp, Prince knows where he is. He's waiting for it. Look at that grin. He's like, you think I'm not gonna get that F? You think I'm not gonna get that F? And he comes in. Right on it. Right at the right time. Right at the right time. Completely in control of the moment. Watch it happen. And then finishes, I thought my guitar was down. I forgot about this part, what the? Right, with that little, you know. But up here. With that same little uh, style motif. I mean, so, so what you're seeing here is just a complete master of the stage of the rhythm, of the harmony, and the melody, and the texture. That's why it's got a hundred some million views. Um, the showmanship completely speaks for itself. Uh, you got to see um, how he kind of teed it up, made sure it was safe, gave himself something to latch onto, how he could get out of it, recalibrate with the band. Um, you saw him very clearly choose a Dorian but know where that F is and save the F to the very, very, very end when he was locking eye contact with Tom Petty and he got it and just like smiled right in his face. And it, I mean, it's so unbelievable. His mixture of, you know, making wah-wah textures with the tremolo picking versus the ba 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 da 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 things people are sing on, in the car on their way home, the, the nod to Clapton, you know, bending through the root uh, for his kind of crying sound where Prince clearly chose uh, to bend through the four into the flat five and five to kind of make his signature crying sound. Um, there's just so many great things. I just, I, 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 it's Prince. It's Prince and I love Prince. Man, who did this? Who did this? Brian J. Olson. Brian, thank you so much for being a subscriber on the website and uh, choosing to allow me the, the privilege of being your online teacher. I absolutely love this. If you guys out there like this style of lesson, where it's like you're in the room as, with a teacher with me and we start and stop and we play the actual track um, and you want like my actual step-by-step -step curriculum and you want to join a community that will encourage you and motivate you to keep picking this thing up because we post videos showing ourselves doing it and posting videos to this React request page so we're all finding new music. I would encourage you to click the first link in the description and join me and thousands of others over on guitargate.com. It's my life's work. It's how I support the channel. Um, and I am uh, just humbled and grateful to get to do this for a living. And damn it, <laughs> this got me going. This got me fired up. Love you all so much. Cheers. Oh my God.